Hello, Maya. Uh, we're going to take a look at your Follow the Sun hosting. Um, and so we're going to go ahead and uh, share our screen here. Here we are. And uh, I've got it called up already so that we can jump right in, uh, right into it. Now, this project was really uh, all about applying your knowledge and experience from the studio to a location situation and then exploring a variety of times of day, which gives us a variety of character to the key light source. The key light source when we're outside is going to be the sun. So let's take a look what we have here. You've got your midday um, examples here. And um, look, so at, at first glance, it looks, looks pretty good. We're using um, a variety of different types of direction here. Um, you've got some broad lighting happening. You've got some short lighting happening. Um, you are focusing primarily on the shadow areas, for instance, right in here and in here and in here. This is all good where you're really looking at how the, the shadows are, are, are being characterized by this time of day right here. This is actually more of a broad lighting situation, which you can see just looks a little bit more stark than, um, than for instance, something like, uh, like, like this, which gives you a lot more... Um, you know, I, I guess, a uh, character to the landscape. Now, that said, uh, for this first um, part, although I think you're identifying using the light well, the compositions really are, 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 are kind of nondescript. Um, there's not a lot happening here, and there's business that's happening, particularly like in this image up here, that just doesn't sort of contribute to the rest of the photograph, if, 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 if that's a way to put it. Um, if we were to simply not have that portion of the image uh, there, if the image just cut off right where you can see my, oops, uh, I'll come back to that. Um, do, 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 here we are. Uh, if it cut off right where we see right here, um, that's the hero. You're, you're really focusing on shadow one, two, and three, right? Uh, this business up here is just business. It's, it doesn't belong in the image. If you, this were a painting or a drawing, you wouldn't be including all of this because it just doesn't, it doesn't uh, do anything for you. Uh, same with, with this area here. I'm not exactly sure what you are looking at when, when we see all of this business here. They're not placed in any particular way that says, hey, uh, this, I'm important. Now, of course, you're looking at the shadow here. I think that identifies it quite well, but compositionally, these are not uh, some of your better um, efforts here uh, on the, on the, 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 the midday stuff. Uh, I know you know the composition because I've seen some beautiful stuff uh, from your, your other uh, examples. So let's come back out onto here. But the lighting, I think you did, a, did an excellent job with. Now here we're getting into a little bit more uh, direction here. And, and, and this year you're identifying as golden hour. And uh, moving through these, you can see that, I, I can see that, that you're paying a little bit more attention to the composition. Um, we still could uh, kind of be a little bit more clear kind of coming in on the image here. Uh, this next shot, much better. Um, it's a simple uh, sort of design. Uh, you're definitely highlighting the light. You've got this object which is cutting through the space. The rest is negative space. Uh, while there are other ways in which you might have approached doing this shot, uh, this is definitely an improvement over the first group uh, where just quite simply the compositions were lacking in, in dynamic, um, in, 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 in any kind of dynamic way. This is getting better though. Um, because what you've done here is formalize it. Even though you still have this stuff in the background, right? Um, it isn't just sort of randomly there. You're setting up multiple planes here from the sky to the mountains, to the houses, to the fence, and then the shadows, and then the road coming through here. We are getting toward the corner here, which we want to avoid. That's a whole nother uh, sort of issue that we really didn't cover in the class about uh, dynamic composition and how it, when we lead ourselves into the corners, that, that can be problematic. This again is getting much better in terms of your focus on the composition. We get away from it. You know, you're out there and you're in the environment and you can get away from thinking about how things are composed. 
you must be just as careful about how things are arranged in the image as you are in the studio than in the, uh, in the environment. Uh, sometimes more so because you can't just move an object. You can't just pick the, this sort of swing set up and, and sort of shift it over. You can't move that building in the background out of the way. You're the one who has to move. You're the one who has to adjust. And, and so uh, this one is, again, I, I think you're taking advantage of some formal qualities which are helping your compositions. Uh, the lighting is great. You're using uh, this sort of uh, side lighting during golden hour. The color shift is a little odd. It looks like you may have had a tungsten setting or some kind of day, uh, uh, incandescent bulb setting on your camera to shift it this blue. Uh, it normally wouldn't be this blue. But uh, that said, it, we're talking about the composition. You've got uh, this, these objects right in the middle and you're setting up this sort of almost a strange um, symmetry. We do have these out of focus, which again, uh, could, could not be there if we got rid of them. Uh, it, it wouldn't, uh, uh, they're not really contributing to the composition. A couple of other things that, that you might have done would be to uh, use a shallower depth of field on your camera, uh, an aperture that was more wide open, like 5.6 or 2.8. That would have allowed the background to be much softer and get us to focus more on what it is you want us to pay attention to, and that's that beautiful lighting uh, falling down onto the chain. So let's come back out again and, and take a look at some of your uh, some of your twilight and blue hour. And I, I don't think you know. I'm sure you're aware. These are these are just too dark. Um, you know, we're we're lacking. I, I'm looking at this on a pretty high resolution screen, and um, I, it's a dynamically color balanced. This is just there's no information here. Uh, they're just a little too dark, that's all. Um, and you might have been trying to compensate, I'm not sure, uh, because you didn't have a tripod or something, but I think you do have a tripod uh, that you would be using in these. Um, you know, I, I think these have possibilities, they're just, they, the exposure got away from you a little bit. It looks like you've got the, the time of day down, and you are doing the good things where you're using shape here, and um, this is a, a really kind of a cool composition. I like what you're, what you're doing here. They just got away from you a little bit in terms of the exposure. They're just a bit too dark. Um, otherwise, I think you have some really, uh, you know, some, some real potential with these, uh, with these compositions and with these images. Uh, we might be able to save them a little bit in Photoshop, but we really want to be kind of thinking about making the perfect exposure in the camera and then using Photoshop not to save an image, but to, uh, to kind of bring out the, the best in an image. So let's come back out, but nice job in terms of working with the light. It's just, it, it's clear that your, uh, the exposure has kind of got away from you a little bit. Now here we are in mixed lighting. I'm not sure why my mouse is uh, sliding on me like this, but uh, forgive that. Um, I think this is where we began with your mixed lighting. So mixed lighting is essentially an extension of the blue hour twilight where you're now incorporating um, artificial light into the, into the scene. And the goal here is not to just have blue hour with a little artificial light. The goal is to, uh, try to find a, a bit more balance. And while I think you, you've picked the right time of day here and you definitely have these artificial lights going on, in an image like this, for instance, um, we, we would, be, would have been better off to be right up here, like right in the middle here, because you've got this light, which is definitely affecting the image, um, but it's just so small. I can see that there's probably another light that's hitting this hole right here. But it does, still doesn't quite feel like there's, there's, there's a balance that's happening there. I think maybe if you had found a more brightly lit area that would have been able to compete with the rising sun that isn't quite there yet, uh, that you would have been better off. This one's getting a little bit better. Um, it's still a little dark, but this is kind of more of what we're going for, where you have this beautiful blue uh, happening. You've got the building which is being illuminated at this particular time. Um, this is kind of what we're trying to explore here, is how to achieve a balance between the, the uh, artificial light and the, the blue light. This composition is much better. You're, you're using the entire picture frame now with the building. Um, that's very good. The line work in the 
um, in, the, in the, the parking lot, I guess is what this is, or maybe it's a playground. Um, the line work there is contributing. These, like your other blue hours, are a bit dark. Um, got up exposure may have gotten away from you just a little bit. This one's a little fuzzy, so it, it looks like we, we missed the exposure. It's hard to work out here. I, I, I'm not gonna, you know, make any illusion about that. It is a challenge to uh, to be working out here, and um, because you can't see a, see as much, and it takes some experience, and it takes multiple visits um, in these locations to be able to get um, to get out here. And I see where you are you know, getting there, you're, you're approaching success here. And in some, some cases it works really well and other cases it doesn't work as well because it maybe got a little too dark or maybe the composition is a little bit off. The reason we start off in the studio, now this is a, a lovely image by the way, right in here um, where you've got the light kind of creeping through. This is just gorgeous right here. Uh, and I would have liked to have just seen that, right? If we just kind of came in, got in there, it's much more difficult to, to focus when you're out in the environment. Coming back to what I was about to say with the studio, when we go into the studio uh, and start, you have control over everything. Everything is very simple. You have that one light, you have some bo bottles, you're arranging the bottles and you can really focus on where the light is. You can move it a little bit, you can explore. It seems like, you know, very, you can, you can kind of slow down um, in these situations in the studio. When you get outdoors, the light is constantly shifting on you. It's changing all the time, right? The sun is moving. There might be other things that are happening, people walking by or, you know, uh, what, have, what have you. There's a lot more that kind of distracts you and a lot more that's changing. And so the challenge is to try to capture those same moments that we're able to do in the studio where things aren't changing. The light is gonna be in that position for as long as you want it to be until you pick it up and move it. But the sun, when you're out there, is constantly changing. So you have to be out there at the right time of day, capture what you need at the moment, and then adapt where the sun is changing now again. That's the challenge. That's why we do this project um, you know, at the end. That's why this is uh, considered to be a more advanced uh, project because you don't have full control over things. So what can oftentimes happen, what I'm going to guess has happened with some of the, the uh, exposures and some of the compositions which aren't as strong as, as, as I know you're capable of making, um, is simply that, that the additional information, the additional kind of challenge, there's more going on, the sun is changing, the light isn't something that I can manipulate, uh, got you thinking more about that stuff and getting away from creating the most effective compositions that, and the most effective exposures that you could. It's not a failing, it's an observation. It's not something that I would say is, you know, destroying your, your, uh, uh, your, your series here. I think you have a lot that, that's working very well in the series. We just have to make the observations where, where they are. And, and I think these, in terms of composition, aren't as great as what you're capable of. Although I believe you're exploring the light quite well. You're exploring how the light is working, the nature of the shadows. There's evidence of that clearly in all of these images. So um, I'm gonna kind of come back, uh, come back here. We talked a, a bit about your, um, you know, your, your takeaway. And um, I'm gonna see if I can call it up uh, quickly. Oh, that's my other blog. We have many blogs that, that go on while we're, while we're doing these things. So let's take a look at your takeaway here. Just briefly, I know I don't want these, um, these messages to get too long, um, you know, because then you'll kind of stop watching. So anyway, it, you were talking about how here, uh, that when you started the class, you had no concept of how, how much light affects a photograph. Um, you have never messed with the settings on your camera. Um, and I'm glad that, that you know, overall, you are, um, you're making these discoveries that, that, that now uh, light and uh, the changing of light, oh, it's blue hour, um, things like that. I'm glad that you become more sensitive to those kinds of things. It's one of the objectives of the class itself. Uh, you can see in your example photos that you are, you have become sensitive to the way that light um, behaves. Here you have the uh, scaling the key image. That's a lovely image there. You've got this bottle image that is, is 
uh, just you know liquidy and 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 just really uh, really kind of glistening with light. You have an image like this where you've got the sort of backlighting. It's kind of illuminating everything from one direction. These are really good examples and evidence of your learning. So I think that's that's an incredibly uh, a, a good way to sort of portray your your learning. I wish someone more than Kate, because I know you guys um, seem to be pretty good buds, uh, had commented. But um, yeah, I mean, I think uh, her observations are, um, are are valid as well. Um, you know, the terminology like blue blue hour always kind of being in your mind, or golden hour, and recognizing those things. Hopefully, you won't ever back away from that. You'll continually kind of observe the way that light changes outside. You'll look at the possibilities of how lighting indoors and in studios and stuff like that can change um, and so on, that that stays with you and that you continue to use your camera to uh, kind of communicate or uh, communicate these observations, in other words, so that when you see something that your instinct is to uh, observe it and then in some way break out the camera and whatever, maybe it's your phone and you just break out and the phone basically as a, you know, today, this is like a sketchbook for a photographer, you know, uh, I have it always with me, we all have these things with us and we just snap something as a sketch, you know, to remember it and so that it's there and we might revisit it with our other, uh, with our other cameras. So uh, I've been happy with your progress. I think, um, you know, you've had some ups and downs uh, in terms of the image making. Some of the projects were challenging for you, others were less challenging, but I think that you were sincerely uh, exploring all, all of the things that we were looking for. So that is, is, is very good. Uh, I hope that um, you'll continue with your photography and that as you see more photography classes coming up that you'll be encouraged to sort of explore that and possibly some, uh, some video and, and that type of thing in the future. So uh, I believe that is, um, that's all I wanted to kind of talk to you about was we come back out into the uh, into the full screen here. And um, I want you to have a, a, a good safe break and we will see you uh, on the other side in 2021. Bye-bye now.